Well, good morning. Uh, we're here back with uh, the Latte Panda, and I apologize for the delay, but uh, when I was uh, getting this ready to be used so that we could build a uh, UWP uh, desktop application that would talk to the embedded Arduino Leonardo, uh, I ran into a uh, firmware issue. And I've been working with the DF robot guys to uh, get that uh, sorted out. And they've uh, uh, updated the firmware. And so what I thought I'd do is just give you a quick uh, uh, video on what the problem was, uh, the firmware update experience, and then the last other couple of steps we need to do to set this up to uh, make it work or get it ready for our desktop uh, UWP app. So the issue was that... Uh, on the, uh, the Latte Panda here, the Arduino Leonardo is actually embedded on the motherboard and it's connected directly to the USB bus. And uh, that embedded device, by definition, as part of the, the, the uh, HLK, or the Hardware Lab Kit, um, it says that if you have embedded uh, USB devices, they should be marked as being in the root container. And if we go have a look at uh, the device manager, and we open up the port for the Arduino uh, Leonardo, we can look at the properties, go into details, and then just scroll down a bit here, and you'll see a property that says in root container. If we check that out, you'll see that the property says true. Now, this is uh, the appropriate way to, to go and build, if you're a hardware or an OEM or an ODM, to go build this. The problem is that in UWP, we have made uh, a design decision uh, in the current uh, releases to uh, not have support or to uh, not surface uh, any USB devices to the a UWP app that are marked as in root container. And that's a security issue. We want to try and decrease the surface area. So what uh, uh, the DF robot guys needed to do was to change the firmware definition so that the Arduino Leonardo was no longer part of the, uh, the root uh, container. And I've logged a, a, an issue with this in conjunction with the buses team, and we're reviewing it for a uh, future release. Um, don't know if anything will happen, but uh, uh, this will let you uh, work around it. So what you would go do is go get uh, the firmware that addresses this issue from uh, the DF robot team, and I have it here on a little uh, USB drive, and then now uh, we'd whack that firmware in. So the firmware upgrade process is actually pretty easy. Uh, we just plug in... Uh, the thumb drive into the um, uh, the Latte Panda, and we just go and restart uh, the unit. Once the unit restarts, it uh, boots automatically uh, and uh, reads that there is firmware on the uh, USB drive, and we'll start the USB uh, or the firmware update process. And here we go. We're just starting the firmware update process, and bang, we're straight in, and the firmware will update. So we'll just let that uh, go, and then uh, uh, once it's done, we'll uh, uh, power the device down. You have to power it down to ensure that the firmware uh, image has changed, and then uh, bring that up back up again. All right, so here we go. We've now finished uh, booting, or uh, the update, and you're left back at the UFI prompt. So what we want to do is make sure you remove the USB key, and then do a complete power cycle. So take the power cable out, give it a few seconds, plug it back in. And then the device will boot. You'll see the little, you know, you're probably familiar with this already. You'll see the, the red light come on as it finishes its initial boot phase. That turns off. And then we hit the power button to turn uh, the Latte Panda back on. And we can see the Latte Panda uh, boot signal here. Okay. So now we're booted. Let's just make sure that we actually, that change went through. So let's go back to device manager. We'll open the port up again. We'll select the port properties. <clears throat> Go to details. Find in root container. 
and there you can see now it's marked as false so now we're actually available to the UWP application to go and uh, uh, and call it so now that we're done here there's a couple of things left to go to prep the machine the first is we need to go in and turn on developer mode and so if you just type into a developer into the uh, ask the Cortana window down here and then we can turn on developer mode and it will go uh, looking for the package and download it if it has to alright so we're set there now we will do a, a restart of the machine the next thing we need to do is actually get the uh, uh, remote uh, debug components so if we come over to uh, edge and go to visualstudio.com So go downloads and I come into tools for Visual Studio 2017. And then we want to pick the remote tools for Visual Studio. And then we're going to save these. and then run the installer Alright, so now that uh, uh, we've finished installing the, the tools, um, we're going to go remove the uh, uh, Arduino. We can either upgrade the Arduino uh, instance by going to uh, the Arduino website, getting the latest AD, uh, IDE, or, uh, and updating it, or uh, we can do what I'm going to go do, which is go across to the Windows Store, and then we're going to type in Arduino here and we'll see that uh, there is a Windows Store version of the Arduino IDE uh, and we can uh, download this and install it and it will, will work fine so let's just pause on there for a moment and then what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, remove uh, the program we're going to remove the existing Arduino um, uh, IDE here and we're going to convert completely over to that uh, Windows Store version of the IDE. Alright, so now that the software has been uh, uh, uninstalled, we're going to go get uh, uh, the Centennial app. Now, this is actually the full-blown uh, Arduino IDE. It's the same thing that we would have had here. But this is packed up, uh, packaged up as part of our uh, Windows desktop app uh, bridge technology. So this is now a fully supported uh, Windows Store uh, package. It can be deployed to the device. It'll talk to the uh, Arduinos that are connected into it. But it can be just simply installed and uninstalled by uh, right-clicking and deleting it, just like any Windows Store app uh, can be. And then it's updated whenever they uh, push a, an update out. You'll get a, an update uh, of the app. So uh, it's well worth moving uh, over if you're on uh, Windows 10 to uh, this Arduino uh, IDE instance. So there we go, we're now uh, installed and uh, we can launch the application. 
So we have updated the firmware to move the Arduino Leonardo into uh, or out of the root container. We have installed the remote debugging components which will allow us to connect from our desktop and push the application out to the Latte Panda remotely and then to debug it remotely. And then we've turned the developer components on and we've updated the Arduino uh, ID. So with that, what we'll do now is just restart the machine and uh, we'll go build our application. So I realized there are actually two more, two more things that I needed to do uh, to get the machine running. Uh, the first, and the one that will take the longest uh, amount of time, is that uh, we need to upgrade to uh, Windows 10 uh, Pro. Uh, this is currently, uh, the Latte Panda currently ships with uh, Windows 10 uh, Home on it. Uh, you want to put Windows 10 Pro because to get access to the Windows device's namespace from the, the desktop uh, uh, OS, we need to turn on embedded mode. And turning on embedded mode is only allowed on uh, uh, Pro and above. Uh, so to do that, you know, we don't need to blow it away and install it again. We can just come straight into uh, settings. Uh, we can go to uh, system. Uh, scroll down to about. And then if you scroll down a bit, you'll see change product key or upgrade edition. You can see the edition here is home. So we're going to select that. And then we're going to change the product key because I have a... Uh, Windows 10 uh, Pro product key. So I'm just going to click on there, select yes, and then a dialog box will come up and um, we'll drop in our key. And uh, this is uh, going to be pixelated because um, much as I would like to share my uh, 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 my Windows 10 key with the, the world, I think I'll, I'll keep that uh, a little secret. Uh, but we're basically going to take that key, go off, check it against the activation system, and then if uh, the key passes, it will let us go and uh, uh, start the upgrade process. And the process will just simply suck down the different in uh, files, uh, update the registry database, and then uh, reboot uh, or have the device ready to reboot. Once we've done that, we'll then go in and add uh, um, uh, the package that will enable us to do uh, embedded mode. So there we go, we'll click on uh, Start Upgrade. And now we're sucking down the, uh, the various files and uh, uh, we'll do the, uh, 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 the update uh, and the upgrade uh, uh, of uh, the OS. All right, so now we have uh, Windows 10 Pro uh, installed. Uh, we're almost done. Uh, and uh, the next thing we need to do is actually go create our uh, provisioning package. We need to turn embedded mode on. So let's go create that uh, on the desktop PC. To turn on embedded mode on a desktop PC, we need to create a provisioning package. And you do that by utilizing the Windows Imaging and Configuration Designer. Now, uh, this designer is available as part of the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit, uh, otherwise known as the ADK. And uh, the ADK is often used by OEMs and ODMs to create uh, deployment sets and so on that they can put uh, customized versions of Windows on uh, devices. So to do that, uh, to allow embedded mode, we're going to go and run the uh, imaging configuration designer and then we're going to select advanced provisioning. Now let's call this uh, package allow embedded, uh, embedded mode and we'll make it apply to all additions. We don't need to import a provisioning package so now we've got a package set up. We want to search for embedded mode, and this is uh, it here. So what uh, we do is select that, and then we're going to go and just simply turn that on. That's uh, all we need to do, and now we can export uh, the provisioning package. We'll leave it as called uh, allow embedded mode. We'll click next, 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 and then build. And there we go. Now the uh, a uh, document is created, uh, or the ICD has created this uh, provisioning package. We'll copy that over to the Latte Panda and then uh, add that in uh, so that it can uh, uh, go and run. Or it can enable embedded mode. 
Hi. Now that I have the provisioning package, uh, I have it on a, a USB key. You can see it's on uh, uh, plugged in already. So let's go back to uh, the main settings box where I get that and type in prov, which will get me the add or remove provisioning package entry here. Now that we're here, I can go in and select add a package. Removal media is already selected and it's actually gone and found that. So we can just click on that, click add, and then on the two security prompts, you know, we could go in and say we're going to add it. And when we come back here, you'll see that allow embedded mode uh, package has now been added to uh, the device. So there you go. We're now uh, ready on here to uh, go build our application. So let's jump over to uh, the next video where I'll uh, show setting up the desktop development environment uh, with Visual Studio so that we can write our demo app. And uh, then we'll push it across to the Latte Panda and see it executing. Hope you found this interesting. Thanks very much. Catch you later. Bye.